What is going on guys, DBG, and today we're going to be going over the unstoppable cards and telling you guys whether or not these cards are worth it in NBA 2K23, my team. Before we get on, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We're trying to 301,000 subscribers at some stage, but um, anyway, yeah. So now let's get on to the cards. So the cards we have are McAdoo Aldridge. So at least we got a popper, at least. We're going to get a cheap popper. Hopefully he gets like an 80 block or something. He could be nice. Bob McAdoo, we got a speed, we got another freaking, he's going to be like an 85 speed center though, he's going to be small, Um, he might be able to shoot a little bit though, and we got Dwayne Wade, Anthony Edwards, Bradley Beal, Luka Doncic, Dwayne Wade, Joel Embiid, and Dwayne Wade, I don't like the fact that we only get six new cards that are realistically attainable, six new players a week, but it is what it is. Anthony Edwards is the first player because let's be real, no one's getting Anthony Edwards. Let's let's be completely honest here. Anthony Edwards is nice. Don't get me wrong, this card is nice, but why would you ever spend time on this card when he takes longer than first of all, he's a pro dribble stop, bad defensive stance, bad layup package, bad behind the back, mediocre crossover, comments him or Kemp, he's a god. Why can't I use okay? Him, absolute demon. I, the best comment is this right here. Is this right here? Just get Spreewell. Just get Spreewell. He's 50k. Spreewell's 50k. He got plus 8 total stats. He's way better on defense. Yeah, he's minus 4 speed wise and minus 4 3 ball. But um, better passing accuracy, which is an important stat. Way better on defense. And also way better post game, which kind of matters. Um, badges wise. Spreewell's got the three got the three half defensive ones, which are big, as well as Interceptor. Edwards got goal quick first step and gold handles for days, which matters and a few dunking badges. But again, you still get like Masher and Pro Touch on Spreewell, which you don't get in Edwards. Spreewell's equally as good. They're about even. If you want if you have all the time in the world, go get Edwards. This might be one of the most bang average takeover cards we have. Like, this was a terrible week, man. You're en ended on end the week on a freaking bang. Tony Parker and an undersized two guard who's basically Latrell Sprewell. Like, come on. So now we're going to go over these three. These are the only cards that matter for the vast majority of us. And this is the big issue with my team is that for the vast majority of us, Beal's going to be 80k. Luca's probably 150k. Dwayne Wade, 100k. None of these cards are going to be attainable for most of us. So these are the three card the only three cards that matter. So, McAdoo. Ooh. Now, McAdoo might be something. McAdoo kind of reminds me of Elton Brand. If you use McAdoo with a big center, like McAdoo really reminds you of Elton Brand stats-wise. So really high speed, not a great three ball. Very decent lateral. The only difference is that you gotta, mo oh, only ball doesn't really matter on Elton Brand, I'm not gonna lie. Because he comes with Joel and B dribbles on basic. They're both terrible. With hot bully. Obviously, Elton Brand's gonna be a better card. But like what he is is basically a budget version of Elton Brand. And I don't think a budget Elton Brand is a bad thing. I think he's gonna be a niche card. He's gonna be a card that a lot of people struggle with. But I do think that he's gonna be a card that in the right hands could be super effective. Do I think he's this comp level card? No, but considering the fact he's going to be 5k MT, he's going to be freaking elite for his price. Aldridge. Okay. I like it. This is the best cheap popper in the game. I have found my backup center. Not really. I found my nobody spent center. Like 82 block, 84 interior, more than possible. 69 speed acceleration, more than good enough. Half masher, gold back temperature, gold bully, gold dream shake, drop step, and post edition. He's got all the badges that matter for a big man. An 85 three ball. And he doesn't even have a Lamarcus Aldridge release. He's a Lamar Stevens release, whatever the hell that is. I need to check what this release is. Because again, like, I don't know what Lamar, I don't know who Lamar Stevens is. I'm not going to lie. Because I'm pretty sure, is Aldridge based still a thing? Or is Odom of Osman based though? Yeah, oh, that's a bad one for Bob McAdoo. He basically gets that freaking bomb uh, Aldridge base from last year. I don't know what Lamar, because Aldridge is going to shoot like, but he's got every post badge that you want for a post player. He can 
he doesn't have the driving dunk or the standing dunk, but he's got 93 post up, 90 post rate. He's also got half masher, which matters like around the basket. Shooting wise, he's gonna be elite. What's his strength? 87 strength is more than good enough. Comments are Jokic might be gone. Very solid stretch five, good budget option. He's gonna be much better. He's gonna be much better than Bobo, not gonna lie. No, this is the like this is the first legit budget stretch five we have. This is the first legit budget stretch five. I just want to see what Aldridge's release is like. I don't even know if Aldridge is still. Has Aldridge come back? He's come back from retirement, hasn't he? Man, Aldridge is the most disrespected player of the 2010s. From If you look at decades start to finish, you can make the argument that in the 2010s, the best power forward from for the entire decade was LaMarcus Aldridge. I, like, you can legitimately make that argument. Because obviously AD didn't become AD until about 2015. And all, by then, Aldridge had made, what, three all-star teams in the decade? And he was still a baller in San Antonio. So the release is important. Okay. Now, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about stretch five. Player build doesn't look great, though. He looks broad. He doesn't look tall. Does it, can he fade? Like, that upper looks iffy. But it's fine. I'm telling you, lads. This release is super quick for a big man. Nah, this is one of the best. Just catch and shoot. Catch and shoot big man releases in this game. I'm telling you, lads. Aldridge might be. Aldridge might be him. Aldridge might be him as far as these amethysts go. He might be the best cheap player in the game, period. And then we got Dwayne Wade. Please. Like, I saw his speed is 85, and I'm fine with 85 speed on Dwayne Wade. I'm fine with 85 speed, but I just need to calm down a little bit. Because if he does less than 75 dunk, I'm going to snap. I mean, it's Cleveland's Dwayne Wade, so it makes sense, but still. He's terrible, man. He's absolutely terrible. Oh my god, he's shockingly bad. Oh my god, he sucks. Animation is over good. He's terrible. I mean, look, it's Cleveland Dwayne Wade. The guy the guy played a terrible half season, then basically demanded out. But still, he's terrible. Comments, this card is trash. Most meth cards so stars. He better than Marcus Martin. No, of course not. This card sucks, man. I, oh, we, we thought we were getting our budget point guard. We still don't have a budget point guard. This card is a trash can. This card might be the worst card in the game I've, we've seen in promo packs. Is this the worst card we've seen in promo packs? Is this worse than Robert Parrish? Because that is the big question. Is this card the worst card we've seen in promo packs? And we are in week six. This is the sixth promo pack. This might be the worst card we've seen in promo packs. Maybe Amethyst Zion. I think this is probably the worst guy we've seen in promo packs. He's awful. Bradley Beal plays no defense, really. Agent 3, catch you dead. I have silver, limitless. You know what? He's actually not as bad in defense as I thought. He's a Jordan dribble style. Bradley Beal release. I don't really like Bradley Beal release. But some people like it. Dane behind the back. I mean, look, if you really want to use a Bradley Beal, this is card's going to be good. Uh, he's got silver body and stuff. It's not like he's going to be absolutely shocking. He's If you come up against anyone who knows what they're doing with their two guards, you're kind of screwed. He plays no defense and he can be targeted very badly with two mans. He's going to two man very, very easily. Defensively, he's not absolutely horrendous. If you're just playing this game, playing unlimited, you're going to be fine. If you're playing competitively, you're screwed. But at the end of the day, who the hell plays this game competitively? There's not enough people playing this game regularly. Who the hell plays this game competitively? Why am I talking about how a card is in a comp sense? Who gives... Honestly? Honestly. If you guys want to hear about how a card does in a comp sense, you're probably watching Ty Debo. Realistically, who watching this channel gives a damn about how a card does in a comp sense? Unlimited is not comp, is it not even close to comp this year? He's had more than good enough for Unlimited. He's pretty good. And then Luka Doncic, 84 speed, 84 acceleration. Uh, unusable on defense. Terrible driving dunk. I mean, to be expected. Um, Luka Doncic gets silver limitless range on his Amethyst. Luka Doncic gets no limitless range on his Diamond. I think you can maybe make the argument that his diamond is, is Amethyst is better. Anthony Edwards greater garbage man. His release, not him. Like this card is terrible. No, I don't think you can make the argument. But he, you can't make the argument that the Amethyst is better. 
But I mean, the fact that the Amethyst shoots... I mean, look! The only real stats that matter are, like, plus 6 lateral matters. Neither them... But you've got plus 12 interior defense. So overall in defense, they're about the same. Ball handle-wise, passing speed plus 6 kind of matters. Ball handle is irrelevant. So he's a little bit faster, but a little bit worse at shooting. Because of the Limitless badge. Neither of them play defense. I think you can make the argument... I don't think you're going to make the argument that this one's better than the 92 overall. This is the worst diamond, by the way, we've seen in packs in general. This card legitimately sucks. Like, this card makes Ben Wallace look like a freaking demon. This card legitimately is awful. Like, this... Other than Aldridge, this has been by far the worst drop of cards we've gotten. And this is right before 250. Like, these cards... He sucks. He's fine. He absolutely sucks. He's worse than Spreewell. He's good. And he's a niche card that if you know how to use him, could be okay. And uh, please, at least get something good. 89 speed, 89. Acceleration, 85 driving duck. 84 lateral, 77 block, 70 interior. I This twin weight is fine. Don't get me wrong. This twin weight is not good. He's fine. He is a perfectly fine card. If you want to use Dwayne Wade, more power to you. He is perfectly fine, lads. But that's all I can say. It's all I can give him is he is fine. And he's going to be 150k for a point guard. That is fine. And I'm guessing these two are going to be the two best cards in the game. Because that's the way packs are. Unless you've got hundreds of dollars to spend, you're not getting anyone good. I'm not going to lie. I like this Embiid. He's not that good. Like 71 speed. 71 acceleration, 87 three ball. 93 out defense, 75 lateral. And I get it, like he is seven foot tall, but like compare him to last week's Garnett. Garnett plus 113 total stats, one inch shorter. Um, but plus 13 speed, plus 13 speed with ball. Plus 24 pass perception, plus nine steal, plus everything except perimeter defense for some reason. Um, plus 10 driving dog. He's only an 85 standing. It's not great. Driving lab 85 does not matter for a big man. Post moves grand. But like, come on. This Embiid is like a top. He's a top four or five center in the game. That's it. And then Dwayne Wade, 96 speed, 96 acceleration. Uh, only a 77 block, which is really bad for Wade. 86 three ball. Half fully fast, which fearless finisher. Clamp breaker, quick first step. This is the best point guard in the game, by the way. But like, this is Wade or bust. I'm sorry, like, this is Pink Diamond Wade or Bust. This is, I'm putting it out there, there are two good cards in this set. And it's this Wade and this LaMarcus Aldridge. Uh, Diamond Wade, in other years, you could argue was a objectively fine card. The issue, the reason why I'm not arguing Diamond Wade today is that in other years, that card would be 40k. This year, he's 130, 140k, especially today. So, no, he's not worth it. Joel Embiid at 500k, is he worth it? Of course not. Is Dwayne Wade worth it at a million MT? Maybe. Maybe. But if you've got more MT than sense, he might be worth it. I'm not going to lie. And more MT than sense, maybe everyone is worth it when you have more MT than sense. Um, Joel Embiid, worth it. No. Um, Luka Doncic is a bomb. Bradley Beal is objectively okay. He's going to be 80k for a card that's just fine. Then we've got Dwayne Wade, who's... Amethyst, who's only usably bad. Lamarck's all just really good, and then Bob McAdoo is niche. This is the worst batch of cards I think I've ever seen in my team. I'm not gonna lie, especially for this time of year, this might be one of the worst batches I've ever seen. 